near mint condition, the home of collected oh, edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. How's it going, all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today for your overview of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Compendium Volume 2 from IDW. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's go ahead and start this overview. So this is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Compendium Volume 2. It is a hardcover. And in case you didn't see my overview of Compendium Volume 1, these are as tall as the Marvel and DC Omnis. I know it can get a little bit confusing, especially when DC puts out their own line of compendiums and they're just soft cover books. So this is a Volume 2, and here it is right next to the Volume 1. Uh, this time around, this cover's done by Jim Lawson. And this is what the books are going to look like in your bookshelf. Volume 1, Volume 2, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Compendium. The green is just a little bit darker than the green used over here. IDW, IDW. And then the back of the book... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles continuing your journey following the early exploits of the TMNT. The IDW logo down at the bottom with the ISBN, the retail price, $150. What's collected in here? Who are some of the creators of this particular book? So let's take a look underneath the dust jacket. So very similar to the design of Volume 1 where you have that right there. It's almost like the art has been inverted, and then the title, and nothing in the back. This is a hardcover, and it does have a flat spine, and we'll look at the binding here in a little bit. Now, I do want to talk about if you have the Ultimate Collections really quick. I've been getting a lot of my questions from my viewers about these Ultimate Collections compared to the Compendiums. That's why they've been wanting me to make this video. If you have the Ultimate Collections, those are just the Eastman and Laird stories. It's not everything. That's what these Compendiums were meant to do. However, these Compendiums are also missing stories, which I'll get to here in a little bit when I open the book up and I talk about what's missing and why it's missing. But yes, for example, if you own Volumes 3 and 4 of the Ultimate Collections, those are missing a huge chunk of stories that are found in Volume 2 over here. So let's talk a little bit about the stories found in here, showcase the artwork. I'll mention exactly what the Ultimate Collections collect and the stories missing in here, why they're missing to begin with. And then, of course, we'll look at the extras and the binding and build. All right, let's go ahead and crack this compendium open. You have these white end sheets. In the title page, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Compendium, Volume 2. Then the designs right there and your table of contents telling you where you're going to find each of the stories. And I love that they do this. It's the cover art, who it's written by, who the artist is, unless it's inked by somebody else. It's pencil and inker, then it's separated. Sometimes there's a, somebody writing the script in here they give credits to. And then the lettering and the coloring, if there is color involved. And this is the era when we're going to start getting a lot of different creators through here, not just Eastman and Laird. So collected in here is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Mirage era, the original stories, issues 15 through 23, 27 through 29, 31 through 37, and then tells of the TMNT 6 and 7 and a short story called The Ring, which is part of that Turtle Soup anthology. Okay, so let's talk about what's missing from here first. And I'll explain a little bit as to the whys. So, obviously, issues 24 through 26 are missing. And so is issue number 30. Those are all done by Rick Vage, who did the Swamp Thing stories. And it's a really interesting time in Mirage, because Mirage wanted to be known as the studio where you can retain the rights to the issues that you worked on. Hence why we didn't have the Dave Sims story uh, in the first compendium. But it was available in the Ultimate Collections. So that's why the stories weren't here. It, it was really cool of Mirage to do that. So anybody that worked on Turtles pretty much retained the rights to the issues 
And at one time, Mirage approached all these people who worked on the turtles so they could have a complete collection and pretty much bought the rights back from most people, not everybody, including Rick. So Rick retained the rights, and that's why they can't be reprinted in this particular book. I believe he can do a Kickstarter, just like I, I, Dave Sim actually did a Kickstarter for his missing issue in volume number one, if you want to go that route. Uh, but that's why they cannot be contained here. That's, you know, independent studio. They were doing things long before Image was doing this kind of stuff. Mirage was doing it. And I love that about it, but then when we have collections like this, it's like, ah, I wish they could just meet halfway. Okay, so... I mentioned the issues that are collected in here, 15 through 23, 27 through 29, and 31 through 37, plus the tales of 6 and 7 and the short story of the ring. Well, if you have Ultimate Collection 3, that collects issues 12, 14, 15, 17, 19 through 21, and then a couple of the little mini stories. Uh, but if you have Volume 4, that jumps all the way to issues 48 through 55, when pretty much Eastman and Laird came back to the Turtles. Now, the other thing is, is like some of these stories are not considered canon, and this is where it can get a little bit confusing. Like, the Turtle Soup story is not considered canon, and I'm sure somebody has a database on what is considered canon and not as far as Turtles. But as a completist, I love to read it all myself, and I love to be the one that decides, oh, this actually fits into continuity. I do the same thing with the Star Wars uh, Legends books, the part of the Dark Horse era, when people are like, oh, that's no longer canon. I'm like, really, canon is what you make up in your head. You read it, it exists, therefore, to me, it will always be canon. All right, so that's kind of a little bit of background as to why those particular issues are not collected in here and the difference in between this and the Ultimate Collections. This is more complete. Uh, than the Ultimate Collections, and we do have a Volume 3 that is coming out later this year. So, let's talk about this book. What, what, what exactly is in here? Who exactly is working on these particular titles? By the way, I really wish the issues 24 through 26 were collected in here because I'm a big fan of the River Trilogy. I read those as a kid, and I don't think those have been collected anywhere. Okay, but back to this. In here, you're still going to find some of the writing by Peter Laird and not necessarily working with Kevin Eastman. Like, for example, the first few stories in here are written by Peter Laird and the pencils are by Peter Laird, but the inks are by Jim Lawson. And then you have some stuff in here that's written by Ryan Brown and Jim Lawson actually doing the pencils. And they're different type of stories. There is one big important first appearance through here. Uh, the first story is all about this comic book store where... Mikey and Casey are hanging out at the comic book store. They run across a invasion of an alien type some some kind. And they team up with a superhero group that hasn't been a group forever. Then you get the tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue number six. This right here is the first appearance. This is written by Ryan Brown. And actually he does the artwork through here with Jim Lawson doing some of it too. But this is the first appearance of... Leatherhead, who of course appeared in the cartoon, who of course has had his own IDW incarnation. So that's his original appearance and all of it in black and white. The covers are still in color. <laughs> this story right here is such a weird story uh, because this is all done by Mark Martin. And it's this little girl who starts the story saying that, hey, do you want to hear a story? And it's all about time travel and maybe not everything is as it seems and this little girl does come back later on this is one of my favorite stories right here this is from ninja turtles issue number 17. i love this story it pretty much is just the character of michelangelo and his relationship with this young lady named ty and it's all about meditation I, I don't know i really enjoy that story and the artwork is just stellar through here and you're gonna see different like interpretations of the turtles and they're going to be going all kinds of different places you know they're just not stuck in new york you're going to see them not just go to different locations but also travel through time in these particular stories meeting some new characters for the first time and then reuniting with other uh, characters now the big storyline through here is their return to new york where we meet the character of zog he's a triceratron or triceraton sorry and there's a reason why they're back in New York. There's a reason 
Well, no, never mind. I was going to say how many reasons, but that would spoil what happens here. But part of the reason is the foot is back. Even though they defeated Shredder in the first one, how can the foot come back in this particular uh, trilogy? Well, one way to find out. Amazing, and I mean amazing artwork here. Eastman, Laird, and Jim Lawson were just firing on all kinds of cylinders. And I don't want to spoil what happens or who even shows up through here. Uh, this is another one of the tales of Ninja Turtles that has time travel. Renee is back. But so is Savanti Romero from the first compendium. And then we go back and forth. There is a ribbon between Tales of and the ongoing series. And now we have some fill-in artists again, some fill-in writers. You have that little girl back. She's back for a couple of issues, actually. Uh, you have the character of Boo back and his connection to Splinter. And you have the character of uh, Radical back. forgot her name. Almost called her Ridiculous. It's a ridiculous name, but she was in the first uh compendium oh my gosh and there is some phenomenal artwork through here Th towards the later half and nothing against lawson or eastman and laird i love their stuff but there's just some phenomenal artwork back here uh this is some more of lawson stuff but by the time you get to these other issues right here it's about the amphibian let me get to what i was talking about one of my favorite artists Yes, right here. Let's go back to this story. Michael Zuli ends up writing and drawing a couple of issues, including this one right here, issue 31. I know that the way that he draws the turtles is not for everybody because he draws the beaky turtles. So they have these beaks like that, and that's not for everyone, and I completely get it. Uh, but I love his attention to detail. I love his panels. I love his composition i don't know he's just a phenomenal artist he's done a lot of independent stuff and i mean this is where you wanted to come back to this uh the story of molly which is april o'neill's friend that invites her over to egypt and of course this is where the jackal shows up but this is where people wanted to come to do independent stories this story right here this is written by jan strand and it's drawn by the legendary richard corbin Richard Corbin drawing turtles. This is just awesome. This is another one of those time traveling stories. It's obscure, so it really, really works that he's doing the artwork through here. This is the Punisher type of character. And we'll be looking at the extras here in a little bit. This is more of the Zuli uh, story. He comes back to tell a story in a couple of issues. And then this is the Turtle Soup. Uh, this is a little bit of the anthology, but again... It's not supposed to be in continuity, or maybe I can't remember, but that one is the only story in here that's done fully in color, and it's just a few pages. And then we wrap up this compendium with issue number 37 right here by Rick McCollum and Bill Anderson. And it's that artwork that you see underneath the dust jacket comes from this particular issue. Now, the extras in the back are just a few. And I mean a few, like concept cover art, the final line art, and the design right here for the covers for issues 19 through 21, and that's it. And then you get the end sheets. This book has 800 pages. Let's look at... It is sewn binding, and this is what the eye looks like. But again, it's got a flat spine. And yes, Master Splinter apparently is a fan of Speed Racer. Actually, this particular issue almost felt like... A fanzine. I know, I know, it's, you know, supposed to be very independent, but this one really felt like in-your-face fanzine. Okay, so as far as the book itself, it's very similar to the build of the first one. It's got sewn binding, it's got this thick matte paper, and you do get minimal gutter loss because of the way that they print the spread pages. Uh, but it, it's still there, it's just very minimal. One of the things I had noticed, though, I don't know if it's just my copy or if it's just a fluke and you do get a ribbon, a big, beautiful neon green ribbon. But one of the things I noticed happened in this page. Yes, in this zine story. So I said that the paper stock is this thick matte paper. And then I get here to page 397 and it's like a... 
not quite high gloss, but it definitely has a glossy feel, like a semi-gloss texture to it, compared to the matte that came before it. And I don't know if that was done on purpose. Um, maybe, maybe like I said, it's a fluke, or maybe it's just my copy. But I found it very interesting, because it's not like anything really, really important happens in these two pages right here. Uh, but yes, this is the only page I found in my copy that has this uh, glossy paper. Um, but that's it. That's the Turtles Compendium Volume 2. I know it's not everything, but it's everything they could get, and I'm just happy to have it added to my collection. There's a couple stories in here I've never read, some I haven't seen in decades. So it was really cool just to be a ch uh, able to get a chance to finally read them. And that's it. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this book. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up, if you have Volume 1, if you're sticking to just the Ultimate Collections because they feature just the stuff that you want from Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, or if you would love to see more of these type of collections. We know we're getting a Volume 3, but if you want to see like the Archie comics or the IDW Turtles in this compendium format. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. We are on Patreon and Spreadshop. Amazing ways to support the channel, so if you can do so, everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Cowabunga. Dude, I had to do it. Didn't do it at the beginning. Might as well do it now.